Hey Sagittarius, I'm just getting ready to record your reading and all of a sudden as I'm getting set up I was just kind of jazzed up suddenly start kind of singing this little song and I don't know who it's by. It's one of those oldies songs probably from like I don't know, the 60s or something like that. It's something like Say a Little Prayer for You. Isn't that like... A Tina Turner came through the other day. Maybe it's something along those lines. So I don't know if that's a song that has some personal meaning to you. There was something else too, and I've already forgotten it. But yeah, just kind of all of a sudden this pickup of energy, like something is got you kind of humming or singing or, you know, a little spring in your step. Let's see. Um, well, let me tell you about the reading, of course. My name is Dina. Thank you so much for joining. What I've done, I've done one other time in the past. I took some blank note cards, wrote one each of the zodiac symbols on the back of these note cards, and then one at a time all randomly shuffled in, took each one and meditated on the energy of the sign. And then I uh, wrote down some channeled impressions intended to be mostly uh, along the lines of love and money, finance. And then from there, I took them again randomly, laid them out, and put some more oracle cards over the top of that. I believe you've got something like four or so cards here in the oracles. We're going to go through all of that as the general themes, setting up the reading, and then we're going to do a little bit of live pulls from the Akashic Tarot deck and see what other messages want to come through to advise on the situation, kind of round off the messages, and we'll end it there. So let's see what your messages are, Sagittarius. <clears throat> so there was a sense of power, uh, very bright fuchsia color and I'm looking down at your cards I am seeing a fuchsia card peeking out I think it's the last one in the pile we'll get to that I wonder if that has some uh, extra messages transformation illumination momentum busy highly controlled environment self-reliance the love urge possibly having been transmuted into roles that you are engaged with in service, uh, studying, or application of values into form. Um, I'm surprised by that. I'm not sure what that means in the moment. I hope that that means something to you about how you're bringing things into being through your own sense of morals and ethics. And now that I'm seeing whose message this is, Sagittarius in the astrology wheel rules over life areas of higher learning, ethics, morals, the codes we live by, and our philosophical beliefs and values. So that's interesting. So perhaps you have been single a good amount of your time, or even if you're in a relationship, a lot of your energy and attention looks to be funneled into that, at least at this time, perhaps. Again, it's a general meeting, reading, so take what you resonate with and leave the rest for others who need those messages. So then attracting and deflecting advances. So you're very attractive, but perhaps you're just kind of, uh, nah, I don't know if you're feeling like none of these are exactly what you're looking for. If they don't quite match up to how you spend your time and attention, if you feel that lifestyle alignment or if you are somehow deflecting these advances for some need to do some more healing in your own energy field, that'll probably come out. Feeling self-protective, perhaps sheltering yourself. But I see that you are perhaps a respected leader in some type of a way. 
I'm sensing whether or not you're masculine, feminine, a motherly influence, a need or urge to nurture, and perhaps even for some, a pattern of a bit of self-denial. And this can also speak to certain individuals having some type of motherly influence, caretaker influence, or messages that have come into your experience that said that you are responsible for taking care of others and that somehow your service to others is enough, even if that service doesn't come back to you. I know a few individuals dealing with this and just as a little tidbit here for those that need it, this could potentially cl clue into habits of, um, from an early age, dealing with the toxic parent, for instance, or the one who should have been the caregiver, being somehow a little less stable and the child that you were stepping in to be useful, to look out for, to take responsibility for, whether you were taking care of siblings or taking care of the caregiver yourself, there was some type of potentially <clears throat> energy where <clears throat> attention flowed to you in some type of perceived positive way when you took part in these roles. Don't take that if it's not your message. So there's this urge to integrate those energies and more and to heal yourself. And even if we didn't touch on what your specific inf information to integrate is, be open to receive the due merit that's coming for you, as well as earnings and reciprocal exchanges for instance, when you might have some beautiful item that you've created, a piece of art or, you know, just something that you bought perhaps, and it's still got the tag, it's designer something that I, I don't know, designer stuff. But clearly, this is a, a good item and giving it to somebody and then they're like, oh, well, let me give you something for it. No, no, no. And Maybe you don't necessarily have it to give, but you are just, um, you know, letting that abundance flow through your hands. But as, as much as it feels good to give with the one hand, as soon as we let go, we have to recognize that that creates a vacuum where something else is coming in on the other hand. So we need to be open and ready to receive what's coming for us, what's seeking us. And it's great to sort through and say, okay, well, this could be repurposed. Um, this, though, has true value. This I need to gather to keep to harness. You know, you need to perhaps for some harness more energy and hold more for your own self. Um, there's a sense of being willfully drained into some type of service energy here. So be willing to take a promotion, to get a raise, to get some type of um, gift. Evaluate spending as a mode of self-care. Interesting, following that designer item with the tag on it. You know, if you're out buying things that you don't need and then you know, you don't return them, but then gift them out. Um, are you also on some level of your heart seeking for some type of um, relationship building through your ability to provide or encourage or support or in some way gift others? Uh, or is somebody perhaps even doing this to you in their own faulty patterns, you know, trying to get their hooks in and obligate you in some manner. Um, gifts, awards, celebrations are to come. That's interesting. So yeah, be open and ready to receive. We already talked about that. Focus on the joy, 
any playfulness that you can muster, good humor, having fun, and relaxing your energies to enable the tension to settle in your field at 1010 on the counter, to release the tension, we open up our chakras for greater awareness to recognize the ebb and flow. And that's another method of being open to receive in other ways. And reconsider requests made for your time and energy. And perhaps even as selfish as it may sound at first, the quote here is, what's in it for me? People will continue to ask and exploit if they know they have a giver here. And I've witnessed this even in, in groups that I participate with where one individual often is, oh, well, if, if we don't have enough money in the group budget, I'll just um, donate this money or this service or I'll pay for this service to come because it needs to be done. But perhaps there's also a way to put your energy instead of like, well, now it's my responsibility to encourage maybe the group to say, well, if there's 10 of us, maybe we could all chip in an extra dollar this week and we'd be halfway to the goal. Or maybe we could ask for donations. Maybe we could do a fundraiser. Maybe we need to address other spending. You know what I'm saying? So you have a very critical mind and you have a lot of ethical values. You have the capacity, I believe, to be able to problem solve without being the solution. Because the more that you're the solution, the more that will be asked of you. And with all of these demands, it can, I don't want to fear monger. I don't want to place this in your energy field if it's not true. But if you're dealing with recurring sickness, this is something that could create a depression of your immune system because of being chronically uh, depleted and feeling that uh, you're always giving and there's nothing really coming or that you can hold on to here. There's something here that needs to be full filling instead of creating that vacuum and then not filling it that's implosive in a way that isn't healthy. And it can create bigger sickness is what is coming through. So keep yourself healthy and make sure to monitor that with somebody that's qualified. I am not giving medical advice. This is just for entertainment purposes, as you know. So reconsider those requests. It's your turn to be recognized, blessed, and uplifted. And then we have a little heart drawn there. All right, Sag, it is your time to be uplifted, respected, regarded. Um, so yeah, maybe you've even received a message recently from somebody that spoke about your ability to be more than humble and accommodating and stretching yourself in that manner. And um, be careful with the energy, like I say. Moose Wisdom is the first oracle card coming forward for you from the animal totems bringing some power and grace into your life here. Wisdom. Let your head and mind reach to the stars, yet keep your feet grounded on the earth. Listen to the ancient wisdom in your soul. The ancestors speak through you. You know much. So yeah, there's definitely with wisdom, comes the ability to teach, to lead, to mentor, to set the bar a certain level for those in your life. And I'm hearing again to show others how you deserve and let's say demand to be treated. And number 21, this is a good healthy card. Enjoy the journey. Stay present and flexible. Many changes are going on for you and around you. These changes are not only good, but necessary. Bring your awareness into the now rather than focusing on the past or the future. So this is good. I feel like 
you're really taking the time, that you're taking the moment to understand that you're feeling drained and to understand the demands and how to manage your energy a little bit better and to hold yourself back. If you're feeling tired and depleted, then to take that day and say, anything that can be cleared can be cleared just so that I can have 10 minutes or an hour to sit still, to either breathe, meditate, have a sit down meal instead of a grab a snack and run and, and go and do and be for everybody else. You know, taking in some good, healthy, wholesome time with friends and taking in a concert or going to some type of a park and taking in nature. There's something here also because of the Oracle cards, something about your community and the way that you engage here, kind of allowing yourself to just kind of move through, but not be the one that is like solving everything. Just taking a step back and letting somebody else perhaps solve their own problem in the moment or letting somebody else step up and to take that next responsibility. Because if you've taken the last one or the last several, then it's time to share and it's time for others to put their hat in the ring. That's the way I'm feeling. Tell me how you really feel, right? Love is the reason that you're so giving. Each person is in your life. Each person that is in your life is there for a reason. And that reason always has something to do with love. Like me, the universe. So enjoy these, these times. This is the fuchsia card that we were talking about. The power and transformation energy, illumination, um, and about the momentum and the busyness and controlling environmental factors. So fuchsia to me talks about the higher heart, our cosmic heart, the one that's connected to everything. And so maybe you, as that wise old soul that you might be, maybe that's why you come into this lifetime having that ability to really align with your values and with being that bigger person and taking responsibility. But uh, it says, you know what to do. So if this is taking a break or letting others take the lead or being that creative individual that gently sets the bar higher and says, well, we've made donations in the past. Let's, you know, to problem solve and brainstorm instead of just being like, oh, I'll do it again, right? In all battles of the heart over the mind, go with your heart. Because truly, it's a lot easier for your mind to catch up with your heart than for your heart to catch up with your mind. A whole lot. Not that I don't love your mind, the universe. So love is the reason. So I feel like you know what to do here and following your heart versus the mind is in the moment, that moment of truth where we could all solve the problem by just cleaning up after everybody, by serving them and then cleaning up. And then also um, problem solving everything else that comes up. Because a lot of us are really good at problem solving in our own lives because we handle our own business. And that's what I'm feeling is in your energy here. But with this love is the reason it's like you are worthy of great reciprocal balanced love and exchange of energy. And if this has been a habit that has played out for a long time, it's like the pattern has truly played out to its extremity here. And because you love yourself and because you love others enough that you want and need to be able to be aware and present for them going forward, you need to take 10 minutes to yourself here and there and 10 days to yourself here and there and so on. Um, so yeah, you're here to, to be this loving 
energy, but you also need to show your loved ones how to honor their own divine limitations and not to be enabled or to become an enabler in the way that when everybody starts to go, Sag, what do we do? Well, what are your thoughts on the matter, other individual? Pass it back to them and play that devil's advocate card, perhaps, to help others reach for their own solutions. And there's this line in one of the Tao Te Ching things. It's like the wisest of the leaders or governors will be so subtle in their direction of the energies that all of a sudden these young people will come up and be like, look, I did it all myself. When actually it's like also in what's that the big fat Greek wedding or something like that. The mother grandmother of the bride says something like, yeah, the, the man might be the head, head and heart, but the woman is the neck that turns the head. Now, I'm not saying that's the truth. It's just a funny little saying that goes, you are that wisdom that is able to turn the head in the direction that it needs to go in with your subtle directions because you are so good at problem solving. And it's okay to screen calls. And it's okay to say, I don't feel like it tonight. Or... I don't have any more Fs to give is one of, you know, the things that I'm really committed to learning how to get back in the mode of doing that because it's easy to say at, for some people and other people, not so much. <clears throat> We're used to being the doers. We're used to being the one that uh, is flexible. <clears throat> and that doesn't go for everybody. I know Sages are usually quite direct. Uh, so Eight of Scrolls pops out first, Paths Unknown. So it does look like you're at this crossroad energy here, <clears throat> like um, like that problem-solving energy, solving your own issue here of overgiving and problem-solving itself. If problems, perhaps the wrong word, might be you facing, well, okay, well, that's not working for me. How else can I do this. Now my right ear is buzzing for you. Okay. Popping out here, major number 10, the light of the world. Look at this inspired, perhaps ascended individual carrying that lantern knocking on this door. I'm sensing that you are this light of the world coming through for other individuals, making house calls, perhaps even traveling long distances to assist other individuals with their path. Um, and that might be part of your service, but if it is, and it brings you great feelings of fulfillment and reward, um, I guess that the issue is just rebalancing with perhaps specific groups or, or individuals or with yourself when you're pushing yourself too hard or, or feeling that like, like for instance, like I'm sick, but I still have to go to work because I have this big loyalty and obligation that I've got to be a person of my word. Well, look at it this way. If that's the case, those other people at your job really probably don't want your germs. And, you know, maybe some aren't worried about it and some are, you know, the, the big issue with the the big word, the tagline sickness that came along that we all know, uh, you could, you know, be transmitting that to other individuals and you might have one view or another of that. It doesn't matter. But other people don't want to even have a sickness. They don't want to have a stuffy nose. It feels garbage. Nobody wants your headache. No, nobody wants that. You know, nobody wants to see you you know, with a head cold, right? Go to bed, take care of yourself. Um, I apologize for the tangent for any who are not at that state, but um, here we have this eight of forces, the lightning bolt. This to me is talking about, don't wait until you get sick to make the changes that are necessary. Don't wait for um, some type of, immune depressing situation to come through to bring up this enlightenment because 
um, I feel like some of the motivation for service can come from our fearful inner child, our wounded inner child, our, our urge to be loved, desired, and accepted, etc. And we just had this huge blowout. When that, ha when that came out, right? So number 12, the scribe is under the deck here. There's a council of individuals in the background writing and an individual here on this higher table writing diligently, head down at work. Really, um, you may be somebody who's very into documentation, journaling, or uh, taking notes from things that are powerful and illuminating to you. You are gathering so much wisdom and there's definitely that humility that doesn't recognize how much more you have retained out of and retrained your energy and your body and everything by the amount of information that you've been able to practice. It's like you hear it and see it, feel it, write it, and review it. And then that becomes your own little divine, I'll use the word Bible, or um, I don't know, your own table of contents, your own reference manual. That's what I'm getting at. Writing your own reference manual so that if you're like, well, what was I doing a year ago today? Or, you know, how long has it been since blah, 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 or just flipping to a random page and getting the insights from that day, something for inspiration. You know, let's see all these cards that came out. We're not going to get a chance to look at them all. Okay. Okay, yeah, so we've got Major Arcana number 17, the lookout. This is almost like a tower card, but it's also the number of the traditional star card in the tarot. And so it's really talking about both the destruction as well as the hope that lies ahead. So it's like rising above a challenging situation here that is perhaps even falling apart, something that is in disrepair and you really taking your time and looking out on the horizon and on the distant uh, shores for an avenue of escape or um, looking for an out, the lookout, looking for an out. So again, if you don't want to go, if you are not feeling up to it, it's in your best interest to take the time, take those nudges quite seriously. So one of scrolls on track. Yeah, it's like that individual still going to work. Uh, I feel bad, but I'm still going or something like that. It's like packed up, ready to go. Maybe you have some business that you've got to take care of. And that can come up from time to time. Some type of important appointment that you're going to handle. But, um, okay, I, I'm not a paid advertiser, but... you there's this commercial that's coming through about emergency, like this extra vitamin C pill. I mean, you can get a regular vitamin C pill, but you can take a lot of vitamin C to support your immune system and the body will pass out anything it doesn't need. So you can take vitamin C on a basis. Now, I'm not giving medical advice once again. So if you are on some types of medicine or a medical re regimen, uh, do your due diligence, research, and check with the professionals on that if that's right for you. I, I hate having to give those disclaimers. It's nonsense, but it is. Um, some people need that. Again, we have the lightning bolt coming out. So maybe on this journey, there is something here, some message that's going to hit you here because that Eight of Forces is the Eight of Wands. So that Eureka moment in transit, maybe along your commute, you get a lot of inspired messages. Maybe you need to have a voice recorder so that you can drive and just speak into this um, device or something. But there's something about recording your journeys, recording your stuff, and getting out ahead of something that might not be in your best interest or might be bringing you down in some way. Okay, so we have the King of Roses, this Master of the Heart, coming through. 
somebody who cares a great deal about you or this is your energy and you being the master of your heart space. Up in the air came out in reverse. There's some type, maybe that's the reason for this journey and this seeking for messages here to get something back on track. Maybe you're meeting up with somebody to sign some papers, look over the papers or some type of, maybe you're writing a book. Um, but I'm sensing that there are, there are crucial things that you're looking to get done. And then we have add some being present for other individuals and being a very talented and delighted messenger. You are a great messenger. You are again, represented by the light of the world. Then we have the Ascent, the Ascended Master Self Mastery. I think I said that earlier in your reading here with Seven of Keys, Seven of Pentacles. Your, your good work is going to be paying off, but there's some patience needed. Oracle of Delphi, you are a messenger of spirit, absolutely. And so here's the scribe over in the background. So here's like you, you attending something, being present, and listening to the guides, guardians, channelings, and maybe you're listening to books on tape when you're on track here. And then writing down your impressions here is becoming your own oracle and magician. And then we have, this is clearing the way for you with four of pentacles. So hold tight to, to your own wisdom that's coming through. There's something that is really coming through and flowing. So all of this accumulated knowledge in your ascension process that you've been diligent and committed in taking part in, maybe that's why you're also being told to take this time on your own so that all of those energies can start to really flow powerfully through you. And once you're not so busy, busy, go, go on everyone else and helping them out, that's when you are open and ready to receive all of these insights and wisdoms and you are becoming i believe your own prophet in your own medium your own divine channel so this rest and this reprieve is going to clear the way of any stuck energy that's been blocking you from receiving and here you are making your way home it's like um yeah, entering into the elder part of your journey at whatever age, right? There's a lot of wisdom. So that's powerful. I hope that you enjoyed and got something that that is meaningful for your journey and, and wherever you are at right now. Uh, check out your other readings and some of the daily dharmas if you're inclined. And if not, if this is where we part, until next time.